Hello and welcome. It is uh, 12.33 a.m. Eastern, the 16th day of January 2021. And in this video, I'm going to be talking fantasy and then looking at the Saturday hockey board. I haven't looked at odds or any of that stuff yet. So it's going to be a raw video and such. It's early season, so I'm going on early, quick, quick season analysis. There's uh, probably not going to be a play. As early on, I'm... Um, Actually, no, Ottawa, Toronto, over. I want to see what that number is, but anyway. First off, Daily Fantasy. I'm three days into the NHL season, and I've won triple figures on each of the three days, but not that much overall, given three figures, about a few, five, six hundred, seven, eight, nine hundred, six, seven hundred, 600, 7, 8, 900, 6, And... Today's another one of those days where, wow, that was unlucky. Matt Calvert, I think is how the, the announcers pronounce the name. Big, big pivot play, as I call it for me. And fantasy, I'll use turns of pivot. Um, uh, spamming, same deal. Uh, doghouse. Pivot spamming means you play someone or a strategy extremely aggressive that could have huge reward. In this case, I played Calvert 30% of my lineups. And it, he was in line. And especially near the end of the game, when Colorado was leading 4,600 goals to zero. No, it was like 7 or 8 nothing or something. It was a blowout. They beat uh, St. Louis by. But there were opportunities for him on the power play. All he got was one shot and one block. But his cost was $2,000, which is the minimum you can pay on these showdowns. 2000 is the cheapest, 10000 or so, and a little higher is the highest. And he comes into the game with, uh, or last season, he had 13 goals, 15 assists, 28 points in 58 games. And the announcers are just saying nothing but big things about this, him. And then he had a big penalty kill opportunity in the third period as well. Oh, my goodness. When the jobbers, I call it to call him, I guess, the the bottom end players, for even these guys, because he can call him a jobber too, were on the power play. They gave up two amazing breakaway chances to St. Louis. Thankfully, the goalie saved it each time. However, it's on to the next game, and uh, I'll quickly go over football first, and then we'll go over the National Hockey League. Uh, Los Angeles Rams heading to Green Bay on Sat well, Saturday is basically today. Green Bay, six and a half point home favorites with an over under at 45 and a half. I like the Packers. I got a small bet on the Packers, and that's nothing too big. Uh, Buffalo weighing two and a half, 49 and a half is the total. Man, I got to think. I mean, that's my job. Not a... I mean, Buffalo, that's not a bad price. That's a really good price. It's under that number three number. Kansas City, I like the over in this game, 57. I think Baker Mayfield, ever since Odell Beckham has basically departed with that team, this Cleveland team is real with Nick Chubb and Kansas City, they're the quick strike offense. I got a small bet over the total of 57 points. And then we got Tampa Bay against New Orleans. I like the New Orleans Saints laying the three points here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All really pretty much opinion plays. And then all those other ones I haven't bet. The two that I stated I did bet are the only two that there are. So some hockey scores today. Washington beating Buffalo 2-1. to one. A little scoring game there. Philadelphia winning by margin 5-2 against Pittsburgh. That was a profitable game for me. as uh, That was uh, the, a showdown game that was worked for well. Chicago uh, losing to margin 5-2 to Tampa. Ottawa beating Tampa Bay by margin 5-3. When home teams win, they often win by two. It's just how or more. Yeah, Colorado wins 8 to nothing, And, of course, Dallas and Florida was postponed. So what we have in here, let's see. Oh, my goodness. There's a play on the Devils. I'm going to lay a goal and a half on New Jersey. Oh, my goodness. Do I just hit the money line, though? It's a low-scoring game, I think. Yeah, I like the Devils at plus 165. All right, let me just get some of my notes. Um, I've already handicapped the two early games already. I mean, I haven't looked at the lines, but I've already handicapped the games. Okay, so where's this game? Okay, the Boston Bruins, to me, I think... I, I Maybe I've been just downplaying since the summer started, and they really did look bad in the playoffs. 
So I mean, I was downplaying them as I was. I was just. I just keep looking at their depth chart. It's terrible. Their depth chart. First line, they got Marshawn Bergeron in New York. Okay, that's pretty good. But Pasternak's not in the lineup. Second line has got Debrus Debrusque, Krejci, and Kasich. And, and that line did pretty good in the last game too. Kasich did pretty good. Uh, then you got Richie Coyle and Smith, which. Okay, the fourth line is Frederick Cur Curley and Wagner. That's not great. Defense was on McAvoy, Gretchel, and Carlo. I don't even know who Zaboral and Miller are. They're the bottom two defense. I think their defense is not that great, especially when they lose uh, Tory Krug. Now, what plus one sixty five is a decent price, but really that's all it is is a very decent. It's nothing too too magnificent. The uh, New Jersey Devils, who they played before, was a three two overtime game. Kyle, Pal Kyle Palmieri Hughes, Sharnagov, Sharnovic. I've never heard of him before. He's a rookie. Uh, Andreas Johansson is on the team now, former Toronto Maple Leaf, on the second line with uh, Zach and Gusev. That's a pretty solid line. Uh, Woods, Zajac, and B B B I can't even pronounce the Bolquist guy. Uh, and then the fourth line is a m terrible line. Uh, defense, uh, Murray, Subban, Kulikov, uh, Severin, Smith, and Tennyson. I don't think Boston's that much better, but it's not the greatest of price because Boston still is a better team. And the, the, I've been kind of wondering about home ice advantage because back in the summer, it was, oh my goodness, even for the Toronto Maple Leafs and MS Oilers, it really didn't mean anything because there was no travel features. Everyone had the exact same thing, like everyone was on a trip because everyone was in Edmonton and T.O. Now, the whole part of travel is, there's two aspects of it. One is the travel aspect, and number two is that of the aspect of the fans. Well, the fans are gone. Now, the travel aspect brings an interesting aspect to the travel aspect. I hate to say that word three or four times or however many times I did, but I say that in terms of, I mean, it's extremely strict, almost like the bubble was. You can't go to restaurants. You can't go here. You can't go there. You spend your time at the hotel, and that's it. So it almost forces players to be more focused for the game, which actually takes maybe that disadvantage away. That's one thing I've just been recently been thinking about. With the over-under five and a half goals, there's no way I'd be taking it over when I've been looking at uh, how weak I think both uh, offenses are. But when you look at the defenses, I mean, they're not that great either, I don't think. So, but then there's no offensive production with the defense either. San Jose, Arizona. Arizona comes in at minus 125, and the over-under is five and a half. And now this is, uh, I mean, I, I, my best way of playing fantasy is boring games. It's kind of funny because St. Louis, Colorado, the announcers in the intermission were saying how boring the game was. I'm like, I'm doing pretty good so far. Yeah, boring hockey games do well for me. Uh, in this game in here, uh, the uh, San Jose Sharks, I'm surprised Evander Kane, after what he's went through, is actually playing in this game. Arizona's got a really, really bad team, but San Jose is not that great either. Arizona's a small favorite. I really don't see no edge there. Here we got Edmonton minus 110 against Montreal with an over-under of six and a half goals. Now, Mike Smith is the goalie for Edmonton, and he's out for several weeks or games. Day off, Koskikinen will most likely get the start. And in this game, Montreal's coming off of travel from Toronto. They, they really impressed me against the, uh, the Maple Leafs. I know it's a high number, but it is the Oilers, and it is early in the season. And, and the NHL, I, there's probably going to be a 6.2 to 6.3 average as when the season's over anyway for goals. Small opinion play on the over on this game. I, I mean, I think there'd be a lot of games. For me as a fantasy player, this might be a game I look to get like players on both, like uh, get some players in possibly on the Montreal Canadian side for fantasy. Like I you already expect... Uh, Connor McDavid, who had a fantastic game. I mean, the whole Connor McDavid, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Leon Dreisaitl. And that was a very profitable game for me last night. Uh, as night before it wasn't, the game before it wasn't for Edmonton. It was actually a losing game the night before for me. But the last one, I used the Connor McDavid strategy in this game. And, well, Connor McDavid did very well. And, it uh, paid off. A lot of times, I used the first time I did it, it was interesting because I put it for in a dummy, like a beta test. It was like, oh my goodness, if I would play for high stakes, I would have won like thousands. And it was kind of, and it really never hit too much, but it did hit one game big time in a Pittsburgh versus Rangers game. And it's a strategy when you got like, like four guys that are so amazing. How do you play them solidly and then productively in fantasy? And I found ways of doing it. 
Islanders and Rangers was pretty much a pick with the over-under of six. Islanders are a better team, I think. But, I mean, over-under. This last game, this is the second time they're playing each other. And I watched the first little bit of it. Then I turned it off thinking, okay, I got bailed out. I'll at least go one in one of my bets. I had two bets. I bet the Rangers minus the goal and a half. And I also bet the over. And it was like 3 nothing, 4 nothing Islanders before he could even blank. And that was the final, actually, 4 nothing. So I'm going to have to uh, – uh, there's really, I, can't, I don't get anything on that one. Carolina, Detroit. So Detroit's plus 190, which means Carolina's plus 220. Over under 5.5 goals. Over the total? That's a pretty low number. And you got the Aho, Shnevnikov, and all these great players on Carolina that will – be able to get if only that Larkin and Mantha line can get something going. They really were shut out that last game, but it is such a low total though. Now Toronto Ottawa is going to be interesting in his one here. I definitely would not back Toronto. No way I'd be backing Toronto. There's Ed Anderson will not start. He's already played two games. It's back to back, so we're probably going to see his Aaron Dell. It might be Jack Campbell. I don't know who the goal backup is. Either way. Ottawa, I, I watched bits and pieces of this game tonight. They're playing again. Toronto's playing three games in four nights. Ottawa's playing two games in two nights. I think that's a small advantage for Ottawa now. I thought Toronto would have a huge advantage coming into this game, playing a game, a night off, a game, after everyone had like what two weeks or less of training and then maybe a scrimmage game and that's it. And Ottawa hasn't played since March of last year, like six other teams. But I definitely wouldn't be back in Toronto on that. Columbus is in Nashville. Now it's Nashville at minus 120 and the over-under at five and a half goals. And I heard Dubois, I heard just heard Dubois demanded to trade for Columbus, I think it was. So there's just bad turmoil going on with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Not a... Ooh, you, know, you know, that's not a bad price. I got to think maybe... Laying a goal, I mean, money line's fine as well, too, but I think laying a goal and a half on Nashville might be relatively a decent play. I'm, I'm probably going to bet it at least small. What can we get out of Nashville's first game on the box score? Again, early season, there's only so much recent stuff. I really just go with what was, you know, what how players should, pro, should progress how the new players should react to each other. So, where's the last game? Nashville, January 14th, right here. They played each other. Nashville beat them 3-1. Yeah, I'd be definitely scared to play the over in this spot. Shots were 35-30 to for Nashville. Which guys got it done on the team? Uh, Philip Forsberg, Luke Kunin, and uh, Jan Ruk. Connor, I think. I can't remember his first name. Nashville probably is a more... They got a better team in overall. Columbus. Yeah, it's looking like a very much... Like they're in the decline. I gotta think that's a play. I'm not gonna make. I can't say that for sure. I can post. I might. I might post it as a official play tomorrow. And my record is like two and three, and I'm on in the green. But that's just how. That's because you hit plus money odds and twice nicely you do. Minnesota and the Los Angeles Kings. Minnesota minus one thirty five. The Kings plus one fifteen. I don't know if the Kings are any good. Excuse me, Minnesota's any good. I know the Kings suck. I don't know if the Minnesota's any good. So is it worth playing Minnesota as a small road favorite there? Uh, Cam Talbot is who they added to help improve the goaltending situation. Very good ad, but we'll see because it's still only Talbot. I don't even know how good Talbot's going to end up being coming. And then to complete, finish it off on the late game, we got Calgary minus 140 at home against the Vancouver Canucks. Six and a half total. And I'm looking at the over under here, five and a half. If anything, the best play might be playing this over, but still an opinion though. 
It's just, uh, I don't know if I would want to go six and a half over on Vancouver, Calgary. That's my first thinking on it. Plus, Vancouver is like plus 120, good enough of a price to take them on. Probably not. And then Anaheim going to Vegas. Vegas coming in at minus 225, the over under at six goals. So if you're going for a minus one and a half on Vegas, you're going to barely get over even odds. Like 130 or something, 120. And I think Anaheim's a really, really bad team, but they did impress me last game. I mean, they lost, but they still impressed me. When you look at the minus one and a half at like the plus 120s, which is what it's going to probably end up becoming, 125, or what it is becoming, it already is. I just haven't looked at it. You have to ask yourself the question, what's the percentage likelihood that the team in question, of course, here, it'd be the Vegas Knights, are going to win by multiple goals? I love this game last time. I mean, I, I bet it. I didn't put a, post it as an official pick. But Anaheim got off to a good start. I mean, the whole game went crazy to start. Well, I can't say off to a good start because I just turned the game on. It was 2-2 like this. Like, oh, my goodness. Uh, Comtoy's got two goals. Now, here's an interesting aspect that I really, really enjoyed in fantasy. And I'm really going to tell you why St. Louis is an idiot. Um, I'm going to look at their lines again just to see where I would have fixed it. But Comtoy got two goals. So now he's going to have to be someone I'm going to have to look to utilize next game. Like, how do they uh, maximize him moving into the next game? Because hot streaks are going to be with these short short layoffs. I'm looking for the first four, five, six, seven games. Who are the players that are hot? And I'm going to say they're going to remain hot for a few. And who are going to be cold? They're going to remain cold. But i got to wait for two or three games to be played to see true hot streaks. But coming off to a good start for Max... I'll see what he can do in this game against Vegas. Someone I'm going to definitely be looking towards and playing on my fantasy lineups for tomorrow. But yeah, he's uh, he's someone that I'd be looking to... Uh, but yeah, going back to the lines again, what, the, what I noticed was... See, in, in fantasy, all sports news is important. And knowing how to get it and how to react to the news is very important. And two of my biggest wins are because of that. As a few nights ago, well, one yesterday in the Connor McDavid, I mentioned that I win. On that game, Mike Smith was like ruled out of the game, the goalie, 15, 20 minutes before. So you had to be there to see it. And more people actually in fantasy by far played Mike Smith, who didn't start over Koskikin and whom did. It's just, it is, it is as it is. And that worked out. But then my best win of the year was the first St. Louis game against uh, Colorado. As that was when Mike Hoffman, 20, 30, and 40 minutes before the game of St. Louis, was ruled out of the first game. And substantial or whatever, he was replaced on the third line by Omer Sundquist. And what happened was Sundquist scored two goals and he cashed my line pretty good. It's my best win of the season. It's only been three days. My second best win was yesterday or the day before, the, the day it was when uh, Connor McDavid. That was my second best win. But within the lines, I'm just not going to look at the St. Louis lines that I got written down. Well, Ritter was on the second line, rather. No, yeah, second line he went on. I was thinking when I said third line. Was that right? Yeah, it didn't. I mean, third line's not bad. It's just normally Sunquist is a fourth line player. And so, and he was also a $2,000 price point as well. So, um, more uh, unfortunately, he was also, he was like 6 7% owned. I, I mean, 7% ownership was, that's exactly how much Matt Calvera was owned in the action today. And that's how much this guy was on. And it was like, you only had like 20 minutes of knowledge to know he was playing. In fact, interesting, I found like two or three guys. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I think this player, this player, this player, people are going to 
played. He's not even playing. I, I thought I, 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 those advanced things that I can find, um, which is just interesting, just predicting what other people do in the game. Not like many would play them. However, what they did in this game is they put Sunquist on the fourth line today with Clifford, Barbashev, and well, Clifford and Barbashev. Um, and yet you have a line with Sanford, Bozak, and Kairou. Uh, Kairou is not that good of a player. And even Sunquist usually does play better lines. So the fact they didn't put... I just got to think that the coaching of St. Louis on that particular night was not that good. Now they got up to a decent start. There was no score. I know they didn't allow a goal for a while. And I think there was, I don't even think there was a goal in the first period, I think. I think that's when they said it was a boring first period. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing really well. And well, I didn't do as well as I could have because yeah, there wasn't a goal in the first period. And Bennington was making a lot of great saves to start the game off, but then he did poor. Then he got pulled after two periods of play. And you can see it didn't matter. It was just a, an onslaught of goals by the Colorado team. Now, this is where things will get very, very interesting for what seems to be... I, I mean, I'm going to be curious to see how the bookmakers are going to respond to this game. Because you can give me Team A versus Team B. Give me Biscalaneous uh, situational stuff like back-to-backs, where they travel from, stuff like that. And, of course, significant injuries. If you tell me someone... Of course, expect everyone to be playing. And I can tell you pretty much what the spread or the money line, which kind of should be, which is important because what happens if you got major aspects that are a lot different? And the Dallas Stars haven't played a game yet, and they won't for a little while because of uh, situational things that have occurred with them as uh, they've had some postponed games. Their next, we can see here, they've got a game postponed on January the 7th, well, this Sunday. And they have got every game thus far. So when do the Dallas Stars happen to play next? And uh, it's, I know the answer to this. It's not a good spot for them. It's just, I mean, if this is their first game, I mean, really. And the spread should be Dallas plus one fifty one if there were one forty one fifty if there was no complications of anything they're playing a good team on the road where now that's not the game I've seen it's actually Tampa and in Tampa and I'm like really no, that can't. That's not fair. That's just not fair. So then, let me just see if this would, I should have just done this from the from, from to begin. So remaining schedule. I didn't mean to do that. My mouse just clicked away from where I wanted to. Anyway, where's remaining schedule on here for them? Schedule. Okay, they changed it then. They moved it. Okay, what that probably means is that uh, they uh, even canceled, even postponed even more games. So January the 22nd. This is a team that's going to ha delay their training camp. They'll probably do their scrimmage game like all the other teams did, which is when you have 40 guys on your... And I, that might be harder to do depending on the players whom tested for the current situation. But that means you have to go into this game and play Nashville, who on January the 22nd have how many? And they have two. Oh, my God, that's not fair. Oh, sick. Sick. Okay. They got three more upcoming games. Two days rest. 
The fact that they gave them realm, my goodness, just lay the hammer on the Nashville Predators to win by margin. Find a minus two, a minus two and a half, a minus three at a huge plus price. That's going to be a sick game. January 22nd, it's pretty much already applied. I mean, I, got, I can't because I don't know the price and all that stuff. And who knows what their first game actually will be. Now, if this was a game, what would I say? Oh, what should be the spread and over-under be? Okay, well, we got uh, Dallas hosting Nashville. So we probably Dallas is favored now. I'm talking like Dallas at minus 140, minus 145-ish, minus 130. Over under six favored under maybe five definitely five and a half got to be favored way over maybe six is and six would be the over under but for this if I was like, oh but what's my job to pick an over uh, I would be like oh my goodness this is an extreme distance I'd have to really go minus two hundred and I mean it's do I could I, I mean in real life now could I do that because now people are like why is like plus one seventy price for the home defending Western Conference champions. Yeah, I got to think that this extra preparation is just going to be unfair. And then for them to have a full day. Now, on the 24th, now, will Dallas be ready to go with the days off back and forth? Probably, they'll probably look much better. Now, another way of playing it would be the first period. Lay a half a goal. on lay a, Yeah, lay a, lay a half a goal on Nashville in the first period. So bet for them to lead after one and get a very good plus price on that. Yeah, I'd probably get good value there. I'm going to be looking to lay the hammer big. And when I say lay the hammer and that's when I make large, higher size bet sizes. I'll find many different ways of doing it, like first period, team total overs, and all those kinds of things. But it will be most certainly... A premium selection. I might even find a way to make two bets on it in a premium play for my 100 picks where I might do something like I'm going to lay a goal and a half on the uh, road team. The, uh, the Of course, in this case, it would be the Predators. And I'm going to go, I say, over their team total, which would probably be lying in at two and a half goals. Okay, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.